Thank you. At, at this time, I would like to continue with the public hearing and ask Mr. Peter Sternberg. Very good. Thank uh, you. With Allied Waste. All right. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. Peter Sternberg, I'm with Allied Waste. We have a business located here in town on Heil. Um, wanted to talk to you tonight about this resolution to increase the rates. Um, it's been reviewed by your staff. You even go out and, and get a third party to review it, which is good. Um, I'm not disputing the rate increase. It's not consistent to what you committed to um, in your franchise agreement with your current hauler. So it's consistent to what you would expect, albeit it's higher than what we've got for our three cities um, this past year. Um, two of my cities were at 0.8%. One of my cities was at 1.1%. Now, we probably use different indices to calculate it, but just so a heads up there. And I do have our rates. If you would like those, I can give to you those as well. Um, but you do have another option instead of approving or disapproving the rate resolution tonight. It's an option that will most likely result in no rate increase for your residents and your businesses in, in the 2014-2015 fiscal year. The city has the option to direct in your franchise agreement where the trash will go. And so what I'm going to ask you to do tonight is direct staff to meet with the Allied Imperial Landfill and discuss a long-term disposal agreement that will lower your tipping fees. And in turn, you'll be able to turn, return that savings back to your residents and businesses. Now, I know some of you were here in 2011, and you, you've heard the representative from CRNR talk about the out-of-control landfill cost. And that was driving an 8% increase. Their solution was to limit it to 4%, extend their agreement out to the year 2027 to allow them time to build a transfer station, whereby they'd be able to take the trash to the new landfill they acquired in Yuma, giving the savings back to the residents. Matter of fact, they, they mentioned numerous times during that meeting that it'll be a 4% reduction in rates. Now, I wasn't here in 2011. I was running another operation for Allied. But you do have video, and I was able to go back and look at, through the archives, that meeting. And during that meeting, CRNR made a number of commitments to the city, and they were critical in the city approving that extension to the year 2027. So I want to kind of review some of those commitments they made. I talked about the savings. They said they'd be able to save money on tipping fees by taking it to their Yuma landfill when they have the new transfer station built on Dogwood. And it result in a 4% reduction in rates to businesses and residents. They said construction and permitting was underway for the new transfer station on Dogwood. They said the extension until 2027 was needed to cover the $3 million investment in the transfer station. Even went to say it began at a million dollars, it's now at three million. And that's why they needed the additional time in their contract so they can cover that cost. They also said the new transfer station was needed for compliance with AB 939, the state's requirements for diversion. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to quote, CRNR's goal was to establish a transfer station in El Central, which would reduce the cost of tipping fees. That's what was promised to you. So here we are three years later. How'd they do? Well, let's take a look at it. Did the residents receive a 4% reduction in rates? No. And if you look at the chart that was up earlier, it was 0.87% for some of the customers. That's less than 1%. Matter of fact, the roll-off customers got a 3.9% increase in tipping fees the very next year. How about the property on Dogwood? Any improvement there? We don't even know if there's a for sale sign. The dirt hasn't been moved. Nothing's happened. How about the $3 million investment in Nell Central? 
no transfer station, no investment. Shortly after receiving that extension in 2011, CRNR won a contract in Hemet. They cut a check to the city for $15 million. $15 million. We talked about Newport Beach earlier. It came up. It's another new contract they have. They're going to spend between 10 and $15 million taking over that contract. Several months ago, they even went to Wickenburg, Arizona and purchased a company for seven, several million dollars. So they have investment. They have money to invest. They're just choosing not to invest it in El Centro. AB 939, they may have accomplished this one. I think they probably hit it by using their transfer station that they have currently in the city and they had before the extension was granted. That may be sufficient to meet the needs of AB 939. How about the last one, of achieving their goal of reducing tipping fees? In 2011, 3.9%. I'm sorry, 2012. 2013, 1.9%. This year, 1.7%. So they're not controlling the tipping fee cost. Matter of fact, it continues to escalate. The good news is the city has an option. Okay? You don't have to wait for CRNR to make good on their commitments to you to build the transfer station and reduce the rates to the customers. You can do it yourself. And you can do it by negotiating with the Allied Imperial Landfill for a lower rate. Rather than trucking your waste 140 miles round trip to Yuma to fill a landfill that they, they need to fill because they bought it, you can go less than seven miles to the Imperial Landfill and dump the trash there. You see, CRNR had this option in 2011, but they didn't want to negotiate a long-term agreement. They wanted to have a very short agreement until they can get their trash to their Yuma landfill. They even said, if you recall, with Holtville, they needed that trash to build the transfer station. Yet, you heard tonight, they don't even take Holtville's trash to their transfer station. It goes to the landfill, because they only have 99 tons that they can bring in, including recycling, including green waste, including cardboard, including anything else on that permit. And so, why the lower rate where they need the trash, yet they don't build the transfer station? The fact is, the city has the ability to control the cost for the resident. And you do that by negotiating. And we would love to negotiate a long-term agreement with the city to bring the trash locally here in Imperial. Landfill tipping fees are typically 25 to 30 percent of the rate. And so if you can reduce those fees, they will offset the CPI adjustments that have been proposed for this year. The city's driving the bus on this issue. You have the steering wheel. I encourage you to take this opportunity to take the lead and lower the tipping fees by negotiating with Ally. We have an attorney that we use for a lot of our franchise agreements, Tom Bruin. And I had him look at your agreement and said, hey, Tom, can they negotiate agreement? Can they direct the trash there? He looked at the agreement and he says, yes. In clause 2.11, the city can exercise its right to direct the location for disposal and processing of solid waste. And if the rate goes down, that should be passed back to the residents. I'm give this to the clerk if you can. That last part, though, that you said, yes, that's not part of the agreement. I mean, intuitively, what you're saying is that if there is a cost savings, it should be or could be correct, but it's not part of the agreement. It's not a requirement. Well, the requirement, the agreement, if the cost goes down, that gets returned back to the resident businesses up to four percent. Now, the four percent, I've been in California now for. 18 years, I've never seen a 4% CPI increase in any given year. Prior to that, it may have happened. But in the last 18, it hasn't happened. 
so I'm not sure if that was it was a bargaining chip I guess I don't know how that's a benefit to the city like I said our, ours was 1.1 percent was the highest this year and that was Imperial so what I'm going to ask tonight is that you postpone voting on this resolution to raise the trash and disposal rates and instead direct staff to negotiate a long-term agreement with allied Imperial landfill I did have a couple additional items um, as far as the rates if, if you reach out to us we will give you the rates for each one of our cities I can tell you here tonight um, this is with the recent uh, adjustment to rates in, in Imperial it happens in July in Brawley and Calexico it happens in January that's just how our agreements are written um, Brawley is at $15.98 and that does include street sweeping for the city Imperial is at eighteen ninety seven, and Calexico is at 18 once again comparing apples to apples there's not a lot of different stuff in the contracts but that's just the, the raw rates Okay, so if you could provide that information to Mr. Hagan, who's going to redistribute it to the uh, city council, I, I guess from a negotiation standpoint, though, if we direct staff to to do something to negotiate a long-term contract, doesn't that in fact reduce our negotiating position because we've told them that that's something that they have to do? It actually probably enhances your negotiating because what it allows you to do is control not only your your collection costs but also your tipping fees wow. your tipping fees are something you can control and there's no reason why you shouldn't control them uh, I came in you know, the last the last business unit that I was working in the city had negotiated the disposal rates and we had to use the county landfill and take our trash to the county landfill it was in their their advantage because they can control the cost you have that ability if you want it could potentially be a win-win for both mm -hmm. right um, but I'm not comfortable with a negotiating position that forces us to the table. If, if nothing else, just, just to get a rate and see what it would do? Well, I mean, you can act to, on to that or we, not. We, right, to the point is there's a difference between requiring staff to come back with a contract with okay. requesting that they meet and confer and to the extent they can come back with a win-win okay. for allied CRNR and our residents that's that's kind of a different nuance yeah, but one that I'm much more comfortable with that's a good clarification thank you do you have a question well, can, can we hear can, can we hear from Dean Dean do you have any comments as it relates to the, the potential of negotiating with uh, allied and what it would do to your um, landfill in Yuma if you the trash that is currently taken thank there you, was Mr. not Silva. taken I uh, madam mayor I I, I I believe that Peter is totally out of line tonight. We're here to talk about a rate adjustment that's in front of you tonight based upon to, for you to determine if the methodology is correct. And he's talking about something totally off the agenda. I don't know if I should respond to that. Mr. Duran, what would you recommend? I think you respond to the, the council's questions. Okay, I'll be happy to. Um, I can't respond to the questions he brought up about the city negotiating. I'd have to take a look at the contract. He's had his attorney look at it, obviously. Uh, we haven't looked at I haven't had our attorney look at it. I haven't had that question brought to me for quite some time. And we discussed on I know, back in 2011, but it's been a long time. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> we've gone and negotiated. We've talked to a lot of different managers with Allied since 19, I'm sorry, since 2004. Um, I don't know how long Peter's been here. I don't know how long he's going to be here. But most of them are only lasting about a year that we've seen. Uh, like uh, Dan said, he negotiated with the manager in 12, and I did in uh, 10 and 11, and we got nowhere. They said it is what it is. They did not think we had an option at South Yuma County Landfill. We invested a tremendous amount of money into that landfill for our ratepayers for El Centro. Um, to, to be clear, Ms. Ms. Uh, Becker, did you get a copy of the attorney's letter? Okay, I'm not sure that that's you, provided to you. Thank you. Um, Go on, Ms. Sanders. Yeah. Madam Mayor, I, um, I, I appreciate the passion, and all of a sudden, trash has become sexy. Um, and so I really uh, applaud everyone for coming forward and trying to do something to assist us as we look at best ways to serve our 
residents. I find it a little awkward to, and I concur with your statement, it's a little awkward for us to be sitting here trying to make a decision in one area and then be asked to flip the script, if you will, and do something quite different by directing our staff to enter into a negotiation with a particular landfill as if they're leaving the other party completely out of the picture. I heard no mention by Ally that they would even want to discuss anything with CRNR. That discussion was going to take place between Ally and staff. So I, I find that a little bit uh, out of the ordinary for us. But um, some number of years ago when we entered into this agreement with uh, uh, CRNR, it was because we were having so much difficulty with our previous trash hauler. The rates were increasing, the service was at best um, shoddy. We had multiple complaints from residents. As we began to look at a various ways in order to stabilize our rates, provide good quality customer service, expand that service by including certain things such as uh, street sweeping and bulk pickups along with street sweeping on any future uh, resident that may, uh, any future streets that may come into play. So I, and I had worked with Mr. Ruffage for some time because at that point, Mr. Solomon and I were part of the negotiating team. We felt that what we brought to the city was something that was reliable, provided the stability, and that in, therein lies where I think we still have a product or a company that is providing us that high level of service. I heard yourself and Mr. Silva compliment them on what they've done. Mr. Silva went so far as to even compliment them uh, when he was going out working with certain um, residents on the eastern quadrant of our city, how CRNR was very helpful in saying that they would go out and do things for those members in that particular neighborhood. So I, um, I just think it's awkward that if, if in, a, in fact, Allied was interested in assisting with a rate reduction or a tipping fee reduction that would benefit our city and our city residents, I'm surprised that he didn't come forward sooner and speak to Mr. Hagen or Mr. Duran. Tonight seems to be the odd time, sir. Well, if, if I could, we've already asked for a six month update with regard to um, the development of the CRNR property, what steps have been taken. Perhaps we add to that six month update negotiations that would take place between the city, CRNR, and Allied with regard to the uh, disposal. Uh, Mayor, if I may, uh, no. and I have well, some comments I, I, as well. All, all, all no, I want to no. say is. It's, it's, it's worth a conversation because I, I agree. From what I recall, um, CRNR was told to pound sand, essentially, that uh, those costs were not, w w those costs were fixed and they weren't going to be doing, Allied was not going to be doing Allied or CRNR any favors mm -hmm. by reducing those fees. In fact, Allied was pretty ticked off at the whole progress of that contract. They were unhappy that we had, had gone out for an RFP. They were unhappy that we had the proposals evaluated by an external consultant who I think has done a phenomenal job on, on our behalf. Um, we always had a lot of fireworks at the, uh, at the meetings as these discussions took place and as the contract was amended and the street sweeping became a part of it. Um, I would say that this is the first time that I can recall Allied wanting to be part of the solution in a very long time. And if that's a sincere um, commitment, if it's a sincere offer, then let's take them up on it. Six months from now, if you come back and say it wasn't, nothing materialized, I think we're okay. Mayor, the only comment I was, I was trying to make was uh, it was an agreement what you're asking us to do. 
but that you don't limit us. If we're going to look at landfills for the simple sake of looking at landfills, then let's look at landfills, not just absolutely, absolutely, one landfill. Absolutely. All right, and we'll do that. I, uh, we'll I appreciate it because well, so, while county has a limited amount of space in our landfills, is let, allow us to then let's explore this issue of landfills and also any landfill that will take the, that will reduce the cost. Yeah. Of the service I, I appreciate that clarification mr. Duran I believe that because of the information brought forward this evening this council has an affirmative obligation to go forward with that exercise so we would be willing to see that come back uh, and I appreciate it if I just real quickly and I, I just want to call it I, I don't mean to be harsh on, on CRNR and, and I, I do apologize if it's coming coming um, that way I, I do appreciate uh, council members uh, Silva and Ms. Sanders' um, comments. Um, I just want what's best for our citizens. I, I just know that before us, and I, I believe that all the discussion that we have today is appropriate. What we have before us is an action item, and the action item is whether or not we raise the rates on our citizens. And to use the mayor's uh, comments is if we can create a win-win for our citizens, I mean, I think it's worth exploring. And, but and this that's is not a, the time for negotiations. You do not negotiate at this setting. But, but this we is are, not the time for negotiations. But we are, there is action before us on whether or not we're going to increase the rates to our citizens. But not to negotiate with a separate, separate entity regarding that. But if there's an opportunity to produce savings that we can pass on to our customers and take advantage of a win-win scenario, I, I honestly believe it should be explored. That's my only position. Yes. Can we go back to the slide that actually um, has the elements that make up the rate increase? Because I think that that's, that's truly yeah. is the, the issue before us. I think, I think that you know, we're, we're, lo we're looking at two different things from yes. my perspective altogether. If you look at the staff report and you look at the analysis that was done by our consultant, um, pretty clear. And it's pretty clear that the, 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 the increase in operation, the cost of operation has gone up and there's, there's a mechanism to compensate CRNR for that. Now, maybe different indexes that other people may look at, but the fact of the matter, the, the, the consultants that we've had retained that whose job is to look in the best interest of the city have agreed that that's a, a reasonable uh, increase. And, and I don't like um, increases, Mr. Cardenas, any more than you do, um, even though they, they seem minimal when you look in front of them, yeah. but as they compound yes. every year, you no, know, they do have an impact on our, on our citizens. So fr from that perspective, I'm satisfied and, and I'm willing to move forward. I'm ready to move forward. Um, I do think that if that uh, we don't want to tie uh, CNR's hand and put them in a in a questionable negotiating uh, environment uh, if they're being forced to negotiate. So I like the idea of expanding it and looking at a broader scope. Uh, that's going to take some time. Uh, I think next year when we look at um, uh, a potential increase, that's a discussion that needs to take place. Needs to take place and see if in fact there were uh, opportunities that were considered. But those are going to take long. Uh, long discussions and long negotiations. So um, I, I do uh, agree and, and accept that the recommendations being made as far as far as looking at potential uh, vendors, potential disposal uh, opportunities in the in the very near future, maybe a year from now. Okay. Very good. This is a public hearing. I do have a speaker slip from Mr. Pete Rodriguez. Um, did you want to speak or just note your opposition? Good evening, Council um, and audience. Um, I think as a citizen, if we all need to, um, as Council, I would suggest, recommend you guys look at all your options. Um, this is not a time to negotiate. It's time to review all our options, look at the best interests of um, all our citizens, especially our health. We don't want no more heartburn. Um, there have been some good recommendations and suggestions. I'm not really fond of negotiations in public um, when it's uh, surprise maneuvers. And um, I think staff needs to do some better, some more reviews, come back with a better plan, look at both options. Now that staff knows, I'm sure staff would give probably a different presentation after they carefully review both options that have been presented. 
it would be very difficult if I was there in their position to say, okay, um, plan B is better than plan A. I think we need to review them very carefully and follow um, what's in the best interest of our citizens. That's what I've got to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Again, the, uh, the contract makes it very clear what the rate adjustment analysis is to be comprised of. Staff has done their analysis, had it validated by a third party, an independent third party, and what's before us now is um, that recommendation. So if there are no additional comments, I'm going to close the public hearing and look to Council with regard to resolution number 14-5050. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move for... Um Approval of resolution 50, uh, 14, what you say? 50. 50? Mm -hmm. um, resolution of the City Council of the City of El Centro conditionally rescinding resolution 1348 and reestablishing rates for the collection, transportation, recycling, processing, and disposal of solid waste. The, the conditions that were, were um, mentioned as far as coming back with a status report on the property. Uh, mm -hmm. status report on the uh, negotiating efforts right. uh, and what other a separate report with regard to contamination rates and recycling okay. with those conditions um, I move for approval Madam Mayor I was second and I would ask the uh, maker of the motion to consider uh, a friendly amendment I think that the um, issue regarding the negotiation should um, take place uh, annually and not necessarily in six months. The other items that you're asking for I think are appropriate, but to start in midstream to do negotiations as it relates to tipping fees I think would be more appropriate on an annual basis when this comes back. I think the consideration of any modification would be done on an, on an annual basis, but I think that the discussion with regard to whether or not that's even an option for us to get in place is is timely given that if there is that opportunity then at our next rate hearing next year we'd uh, be able to benefit from that bargain right. i'm not so i'm not i'm not hearing an, a, well, an approval of i i, of the I yes but i made for i put forth a good faith effort so i'm not hearing any <laughs> any acceptance of my friendly amendment either so we you'll withdraw so I'll we do we do have a um, motion by Silva, a second by Sanders, approval of resolution number 14-50. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Madam, uh, Madam Mayor, I'm going to be voting in favor of this, but I still want to hold true to that uh, comment I made earlier. I just think that it would be more appropriate to do it on an annual basis, but I will give way to so that this would pass. Otherwise, we would have a 2-2 vote and it would fail. So I need this to pass. We have uh, res approval of resolution 14-50 approved, or pro, Silva, Walker, Sanders. We have one vote no, Mr. Cardenas, and one absent. So motion carries. Okay, at this time uh, we will move on to a public hearing to consider a recommendation of the Planning Commission on item number 19. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the Council. The project before you is a request uh, for a conditional use permit, number 1401. And this conditional use permit is submitted by Verizon Wireless, who proposes to 
uh, construct a telecommunication tower at the Best Western Hotel. at 2352 South 4th Street. The applicant, again, is Verizon uh, Wireless. The property owner would be El Centro Hotel Partners. The project site is approximately 0.95 acre site, and it's located in the CT Tourist Commercial Zone. Just a brief overview of the location. This is Interstate 8, uh, South 4th Street. Uh, this is the Best Western, and this is the IHOP. This is a, an area of the property. Again, uh, this is 4th Street, the IHOP, and this is the Best Western. So, more or less, the tower would be located within this area. This is just a brief elevation of what the tower would look like. It would look like a monopalm tower. It would consist of 12 antennas. It would also have an equipment shelter, which would be located here. And the distance between the equipment shelter and the tower is approximately 55 feet. Again, this is a, the enlarged site plan. This is uh, the, the, the hotel. This would be the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the tower. I'm sorry, the tower's here, and this is the distance between 55 feet. Um, this is before and after installation. As you can see, this is the site, and this is a simulation of the, uh, how, what the tower would look like and the distance uh, between the building and, and the tower. The, uh, regarding the environmental review, the project is exempt from CEQA. So at this time, we're asking that a public hearing uh, be opened. Uh, there are some conditions of approval, and they are uh, included in the staff report. And the conditions are, are standard conditions, basically that the site has to be maintained uh, free of any debris. Um, the CUP is good for 10 years. Uh, the project has to be reviewed and also prior to the final inspection, uh, it has to pro uh, the project applicant has to provide compliance with the uh, FCC and the FAA. Um, and uh, those are just briefly the conditions for the project and at this time we're asking that the public hearing be open. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Villacana. We will um, open the public hearing on item number 19. Ask if there's uh, questions from council. None at this time, Madam Mayor. I just, uh, and I'm going to steal a page from our mayor, but I, I think she was an advocate of, of uh, making sure that in the event that there was some demolition conditions that they would have to haul it away in, in the event that they were to go away. Is there some conditions towards that? Yes, and I believe that. Uh, Excellent. Sorry about that. I w it was actually in your notes. Mm, yes. Number eight, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Great. Norma, do, do you and it seemed to me that the, the issues by the fire department had not really been addressed, and I know you have a condition that kind of makes it a requirement that they meet and, and address, and so that may ultimately result in some modifications? Yes, of course, when, uh, the build, when permits are pulled, the, the plans are gonna be reviewed by the fire department. Mm -hmm. We did receive uh, confirmation from the fire department, and maybe they can speak on behalf, that they review the clearance of 55 feet, and they're okay with that. But there's gonna be a, a further review by all the departments. I just, I just want to say that I, I, I don't like them. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that they're, um, they're not aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. pleasing. Uh, they look like a fake palm tree that has uh, 
by much of antennas on them. Uh, but then they're the reality of things. And if we want improved uh, wireless communication in our city, well, those are just things that yeah. we have to have. And so I, I don't like them, but I also see the value of them. We, we had a request uh, fairly recently for the installation of <coughs> palm tree down at the Imperial Valley Mall. Do That's we know correct. It? Has that occurred? They haven't pulled building permits yet, but it's it's been it was approved. Uh -huh. Right, right, okay. Uh -huh. Additional questions? I do have. Um, the pro project proponent is available if there's any specific questions. But I, I, I have a question, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is Vicanya. I've looked through this. I don't see the planning commission's. Where's it's their votes. Where I don't see it. Uh, maybe I'm over. Flipping through the pages a little too fast. The planning commission's uh, the resolution. Resol planning commission resolution is actually 18 and 19. However, okay. we didn't have the so executed resolution by the time we got okay. this, but it was approved by the it planning was, commission. Okay, With thank you. Okay. And the vote was unanimous. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Additional questions. If not, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this item? Okay, we will close the public hearing, remove or return to council, and I'll be looking for action on resolution number 14-51. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Cardenas, second by Sanders, approval of resolution number 14-51, resolution of City Council of the City of El Centro, approving conditional use permit number 14-01 to allow the construction of an 80-foot wireless telecommunications monopole tower designed as an artificial palm tree, <laughs> monopalm, on property located at 2352 South 4th Street, further identified by APN number APN 053-810-002. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed, four with one absent. Thank you, Ms. Viacanya. We'll move on then to item number 20 which is a public hearing to consider recommendation planning commission to approve a zoning ordinance text amendment. Thank you, honorable mayor and members of the council. The following text amendment is being requested by Mr. Samaniego, who is looking into opening a storage uh, yard for vehicles uh, within the city limits. Right now, our, t our zoning ordinance is very limited where, um, where it only allows tow yards or storage yards in the heavy commercial and the manufacturing uh, zones. At this time, Mr. Samaniego has requested that we amend our zoning ordinance to allow the uh, tow yards and storage yards within the ML light manufacturing area. And uh, of course, with the conditional use permit. So the, the text amendment would apply within the entire city of El Centro, within all the ML light manufacturing areas. And what is being requested is just a simple text amendment, and it's, it's kind of difficult to see, but it's item number three, where you have automoto, automobile wrecking salvage yards. Right now, there's an X, so we're requesting that uh, they be allowed within the ML zone with the conditional use permit. And uh, pursuant to uh, CEQA, this, uh, there's no further environmental review for this project. So the action that we're requesting is uh, opening the public hearing and uh, approve the attach the aforementioned uh, text amendment. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Biakanya. We will open the public hearing at this time. <coughs> Questions of council? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. you know, this, this usage is a pretty heavy, intense usage. That's why in the past it was, was not allowed under uh, light manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you know, having, the, having applicants go through a conditional use permit will allow us to evaluate that on a case by case, by case basis, mm -hmm. but um, what kind of conditions would you anticipate uh, we should be looking at in order to allow this very heavy 
heavy usage, industrial usage be allowed and what would make it acceptable from your perspective um, in, in a light manufacturing zone? Well, because some of the industrial uses that are currently allowed in, within the ML zone are technically sometimes um, heavier than, than, I mean, it's, it, they're, they're more uh, stringent and more, uh, how can I say, they're, there's more density, more uh, usage. So we don't see, we've reviewed other cities and other cities allow them within the ML, with the, within their light manufacturing zone. Um, requiring a condition of use permit would allow us as staff to make sure that the property is screened correctly, mm. that uh, the area, there's some kind of either cement that the cars are not parked just on the dirt so we would require some kind of mitigation for the soil or for the area. Also, we're gonna require, if there's any offsite improvements that need to be uh, within that project site, we would require uh, uh, sidewalk curves, gutters. And usually this would be good within the industrial areas because as you know, some of our industrial areas don't have the required uh, improvements, street improvements. Mm -hmm. So we feel that this will actually help bring those uh, areas, you know, up to standards. Yeah. Thank you, Norma. Mm -hmm. Ms. Vicanya, could you go back to the, the map that has the, there we go, mm -hmm. um, and, and help me understand, we have, we have some areas along the brewery in the area of, I think, around Orange, perhaps, or maybe a little bit farther north between Orange and Main Street, where we've got folks storing recreational vehicles. Because when, yes. the, city went, when the city went forward with the requirements or the, with regard to how many hours you can be on street, mm -hmm. um, I think that was great because we were successful in getting a lot of those recreation vehicles off the streets mm -hmm. and in storage facilities, but um, they just look out of place in those residential yes. areas. And so I'm, as I was prepping for the meeting and reading through this, I'm trying to differentiate in my mind, what's the difference between having an automobile storage area mm -hmm. and having these ginormous recreational vehicles mm -hmm. in a storage area that appears to be almost in, in conflict with what we're trying to do yes. here. If I may, that particular site on the Bursary and close to Orange, uh -huh, yeah, you know that, what I'm talking that about. That was grandfather in when it, that that used to be county, so we wouldn't allow that right now. So if that use ever is uh, abandoned, we we would not allow the same type of use within that project site, within that site. Well, if that if that was ever used for that, it's it's used in a much greater capacity and number now because yes right? we've, no, I, we've noticed but unfortunately because it was grandfather in when, when in that area became city uh, we we need to allow it until the use is abandoned okay so so how do we define that use if I was if that would be under recreational uh, it's it's a different category and I'm not sure whether we but it's certainly not this recreational no. vehicle park. That's something totally No, different. it would be a, a storage of RV uh, recreational vehicles. It's a different category, and unfortunately, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't see it here. Okay. Oh, uh, no, it's not here. But it would, it, uh, those are a little bit, it's, it's something different because with the tow yards, with the storage yards, you need to allow uh, parking for customers when they come and pick up their cars. You typically uh, have an office with RV parking, uh, recreation vehicles. It's a little bit different. It would have the same requirements, screening and so forth, but hard surface, uh, hard surface, but not um, not as strict as as uh, with the uh, toy yards. Yeah, I guess the other area that I'm very familiar with in terms of the RV storage is over off of Wake. Wake by. Um, I believe it's behind Lucky's. Yeah. Oh, oh that's the, part of the broken spoke. Mm -hmm. That's part of. I'm sorry. Uh, the broken spoke uh, facility. Desert trails. Oh. Desert trails. Yeah. Desert trails. Uh, Desert trails. Interesting. Okay, uh, Mr. Cardenas. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. 
I have a question. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Uh, I have a question, Ms. Viacanya. Mm -hmm. Would that be similar to the sites that's located on the eastern quadrant of commercial? Yes, if you recall, uh, Mr. Haas, yes. Uh, yes, and uh, he went through ACUP. ACUP was granted. Okay. Yes, and uh, we require the hard surface. We require the screening. He did some landscaping in the mm -hmm. front, mm -hmm. some improvements. So it's actually looking nicer now, that area. Yeah. So uh, is the applicant, the applicant's coming in now just to get the CUP. Has a site been located where he would like to place this? Uh, the applicant's coming in right, right now just to change the ordinance. I believe he has a site in mind, okay. and the applicant's representative is here, Mr. Samaniego. Maybe he can... Uh, yeah, I'd like to see if there's a site in mind. Yes, we do have a site. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, 312 West uh, Broadway. 312 West Broadway? Yes. That one right there. 312, is that in our Civic Center zone? No, it's not. It's in the ML. So it's on 312 West Broadway. It's on the other side of the track. Yes. Yeah. So it's between side. commercial and that little space that's... Let me see how we see that you're looking south. Oh, am I looking? Is what uh, is it east? It's east, isn't it? East. Oh, it's west. Oh, it's west. Well, it's on the east side of the tracks, but it's uh, it's on the west. It's west. the east side of the track, but yep. consider it west as far as uh, address. Yeah, okay. Point it out to me again, please, Miss Viacanya. Okay, th these are the tracks, and this is the building, the yes. proposed site. As you can see. Uh, we would require um, curb, gutter, and sidewalk right now. Let me see if I have another picture. Uh, okay, yes, yeah. okay. So it would be completely screened. And, uh, of course, improvements would need, need to be made. Uh, Off-site improvements, also uh, hardscape, and uh, so that's something that we would condition through the CUP. Okay. Additional okay. questions, comments? Okay, we're going to go ahead Thank and uh, close the public hearing and look for action on ordinance number 14-12. I move for approval. Second. I have a motion by Silva, second by Cardenas to approve ordinance number 14-12, ordinance of the City Council, City of El Centro, amending chapter 29, division 4, article 2, of the Code of the City of El Centro by amending subsection E3 to table 29-69.1 of section 29-69. Waive reading and approve as a first reading and direct staff to schedule second reading and adoption of the ordinance on the next City Council agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 4-0 with one absent. Moving forward then on item number 21, Ms. Viacanya, discussion necessary action regarding amendment to section 13-11, oh, excuse me, 13-119. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the council. As some of you may recall, about a year ago, we, uh, action was taken by council to basically postpone the application, uh, accepting applications for uh, medical marijuana dispensaries due to the fact that there were several legal issues going through the court systems. So at that time, the city council uh, took action and uh, to postpone that application process until July 1st of 2014. Well, July 1st is around the corner. <laughs> so uh, what has happened between last year and this year? Well, basically, there are other legal um, court cases going through, the, going through the system. There's also two pieces of legislation that are being considered right now at the state level. And one of them, uh, the Senate Bill 1262, basically proposes to improve the current regulations and making uh, cities mo having more control over public safety, uh, human and safety standards, 
basically uh, also having more regulations upon the physicians who issue the recommendations. And there's another one that's also being going through the process, and that's Assembly Bill 604. So the only problem with these two bills is that, as you may recall, neither of the past court cases addressed the issue of whether the state could uh, do business that's, that's not, that's prohibited by the federal government. The federal preemption issue. Thank you, Chris. So in that, in that regard, neither of these two cases that are go moving through the process address that issue. So with that regard, we are recommended to extend the application uh, opening period for another year and maybe consider that for July 1, 2015. <clears throat> we, we do have a speaker slip um, for Olga Porter wanting to speak in favor of the recommendation and I wanted to make sure that um, Ms. Porter understood that what the action before us tonight is to continue the moratorium and not issue any permits for an additional year until there's more certainty with regard to the status of the law. Okay. I, I came today to give in that, uh, maybe a piece of information. Okay. That if you could please step to the podium, we'd be very happy to hear okay. from you. I'd like to give this to the clerk so she can First. pass it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, what Ms. Um, Biacano is um, addressing, uh, that there's no clarification whether it's, um, you know, the uh, federal law will interfere with state law. The, um, just two weeks ago, uh, two Fridays ago, there was um, uh, the GOP, let me just read here, the GOP um, voted, GOP House backs state medical marijuana laws. That vote came 219 to 189. And um, what this means is that basically they're gonna cut the budget to the, um, the uh, Drug Enforcement Association they're going to cut their budget, and they're not going to allow them any money to um, raid, this. arrest, or prosecute oh, okay. medical marijuana, legal mar medical marijuana, California qualified uh, providers. Mm -hmm. So this came uh, two weeks ago. It's an amendment um, that just passed, uh, and uh, it still has to go before President Obama. He still has to sign it, but we did win it, and it's a game changer, as it says here on this article. And um, this. I leave it up to the most capable hands of our of our city council to decide whether um, a dispensary is in the best interest of our community. In my opinion, it is. You know, it's uh, done wonders for um, my husband, for Mr. Cardenas that doesn't know us from last year. My name is Olga Porter. My husband's name is Juan Carlos Robles. He suffers from muscle spasms uh, due to um, uh, dystonia and cerebral palsy. He was born that way. And medical marijuana has just done wonders for his muscle spasms, and he's able to sit still, you know, otherwise he'd be moving violently and, and all the, stuff, the bad things that muscle spasms brings. Um, uh, uh, during this year, we've also done, we've made tremendous strides with our other patients. Um, we're working with something called um, uh, cannabis oil. Uh, some, call it, some people call it Rick Simpson oil. And um, there's a couple of cancer patients that we're working with uh, uh, currently. I've taught them how to make it, which is very easy. It's, um, it's, um, you use a, an alcohol solvent and a double boiler. <laughs> Basically, they get their medical marijuana from us. We've been providing for them for four years. We've been, we're an established uh, medical marijuana delivery service. We're state licensed. We pay taxes to the state and to the federal government. It's public, public record. You can look us up. Um, we pay regularly every three months and every year, and um, so so that's who we are. We're Desert Wellness Patients Association, and so I just wanted to say hi again, and you know, and and introduce myself to Mr. Cardenas, and and also give you this important piece of information for your just deciding factors. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much for your time, Ms. Porter. We appreciate you being here, and obviously, with with any action that we take this evening, if there becomes greater clarity with regard to this um, ordinance, um, the legislature finally gets its act together and puts something in place that we can deal with, we can always bring this back earlier and begin oh, the process. Be so. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful because the, the, the question always is, when can, I, 
when I can right. I go in and see what I'm getting and right. so we continue to be in the, our patient's living room and we show them how to do how to prepare and and ingest their medication um, it, and you know we just we go to them but they would love to for me to help be, be able to help help classes to teach them in a group and somewhere where they can come and they can have safe access to their medication. Um, we do have to meet them. Sometimes they don't want to meet at their house, so we mm -hmm. do meet them at a grocery store. We meet them, you know, so that's not very safe for them um, or, or us, you know. So um, do we would like a place where they would come in and feel like they're at home and feel comfortable and, and, and get their medication. So, so, so thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions, comments? You no, know, I just had. A, for, I apologize for being a novice on this uh, subject, but where do you currently get your cannabis? Oh, we um, have. We grow it ourselves. We grow it from our and our patients grow it, and they uh -huh. donate it to us. Okay. So yeah, mainly it's it's with a, We have a membership uh -huh. agreement, and whoever is our member is able to uh, legally grow. Um, I think the federal guidelines uh, uh, say twelve. Um, twelve. Uh, Im immature, no, 12 immature plants and six mature plants. So, uh, and then plus they can have eight ounces of dry marijuana additionally. Okay. So basically, you know, they don't, everyone donates to us and um, that's basically who we get our medication from. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there are no additional questions, I'd look. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. So th th there are other communities that have this, the medical dispensaries, correct? Yes. Yes. And so if we, if we didn't, if we just opened it up and, and enforce our ordinance that allows it, what, what exposure would we have given the, the pending court actions that are? Well, the, the biggest concern that I have is the federal preemption issue. It was a, a, an appellate court has already determined that local agencies cannot permit or allow um, a medical marijuana dispensaries in their jurisdictions. They can't regulate. They, it's the they can't regulate them. The is, is basically what they found out because the federal law, federal law, classifies marijuana as a schedule. Is it Schedule One? Schedule One. It's still Schedule One. Yeah. We're trying to reschedule. We're still grassroots efforts. We're still trying to reschedule. So, essentially, we're taking a very cautious. Pr uh, uh, we're, we're proceeding very cautiously because we, we really don't want to be the test case. But how do, how do other cities that have them have allowed them, how do they get around uh, that provision or they just, they just are willing to take the They're take willing the, to take the risk, exactly. Take the risk and the exposure? Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 But I have to speak for him. I have to speak for him. So um, include the people that we've been working with that have um, cancer and tumors, and the Rick Simpson cannabis oil has worked tremendously in their lab results, and we have that for you. you know, I said, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, but I know uh, Council Member Silva said that there's other communities. Is there any other community? Are those communities in our county? No. 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 Oh. no. Uh, if I may, Mayor, uh, uh, Mr. Biacana, you'd like to talk about these status of that as far as you know among the cities we're the only one that's actually adopted an ordinance. considering the dispensaries within the imperial county imperial yes county. Mm -hmm. all the other others either are not addressing it or have banned them and uh, madam mayor you may recall that i when i came back from san francisco i brought the, all of the information as to what they had the medical cannabis uh, store i called it uh, in san in the city of san francisco um, so what I think that this. Uh, I, I think this is the last time we kick the can down the road, and we just have to make a decision and, and get it uh, in place. <coughs> With that, I'm going to look for um, approval of re Ordinance Number 14-13. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Selva, second by Cardin. Excuse me, Sanders, second by Cardenas. Sanders, Cardenas. Uh, approval of Ordinance Number 14-13, Ordinance of the City Council of City of El Centro, amending Section 13-119F of Article 7, Chapter 13 of the Code of El Centro, establishing regulations and procedures for medical cannabis dispensaries 
waive reading and approve as a first reading and direct staff to schedule second reading and adoption of ordinance on the next city council agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 With, with a comment that I, I agree that we, we have to, uh, I'm going to give it one more year, but a year from now we got to make a final decision and, and uh, move forward. Yeah, move forward. Yeah. Very good. So that passed uh, four with one absent. Um, item number 22. At this point, um, I'm going to uh, hold on the ECRMC Board of Trustees. I need to make some additional um, inquiries with regard to those appointments. With regard to the Library Board of Trustees, I am putting forward the names of uh, Adrian Perez, who is an existing member, would like to be reappointed, and Mr. David Tyler. Move for the approval. mayor's recommendation. Oh, second. I have a motion by Silva, second by Sanders. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, sorry. All Aye. Right. Sorry. So we, we have Mr. Perez and Mr. T uh, Tyler, David Tyler, as our new library oh, board great. members. All right. Uh, we do have an added item coming out of closed session. So we have a motion to add. Move to add. Second. A motion by Sanders, second by Cardenas to add an item coming out of closed session. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passed, four with one absent. Coming out of closed session, we have director contracts for approval. The following 11 resolutions of the City Council of City of El Centro establishing the compensation and employment terms for the position of as follows. City manager, city attorney, city clerk, economic development, police chief, library director, fire chief, public works director, finance director, human resources director, community development director. We also have the following unrepresented re resolutions for approval, uh, unrepresented management employees, unrepresented confidential employees, unrepresented police management employees, and unrepresented fire safety management employees. So would, I would be looking for an approval of all of those MOUs, of those 15 MOUs. Move approval. They, we need to um, do them separately? Do them, we need to do them one at a time because they each need to have their own separate resolution numbers. Can't we have that assigned later? Can you make any motion that I'll assign Okay. Can we? Can you include that in your resolution that the uh, city that clerk the, will assign the numbers? Yes. Uh, okay. The motion will include that the city clerk will assign the resolution numbers to each one of these 15. Second. We have a motion by Sanders, second by Cardenas. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So these uh, 15 contracts, MOUs, have been approved, four with one absent. Okay. Uh, there is no business for the successor agency to the redevelopment agency, no business for the successor housing agency. Public comments, any additional public comments? We'll move on then to mayor and council member reports. Um, Mr. Silva. Um, I have no report and I just looked at my calendar to make sure that I miss, didn't miss anything and no, I didn't miss anything, <laughs> so I have no report. Thank you. Other, other than there, there was no, um, Chamber meeting uh, Monday because of the uh, annual dinner. installation dinner uh, this Thursday, and I know I'm scheduled to attend, and um, hope to see other council members there as well. Okay. Um, just, I just wanted to share real briefly. Um, attended a um, graduation ceremony at the Alternative Ed Community School. Our uh, police chief Madueño was the keynote speaker. If you guys haven't heard him speak, uh, as far as you know, motivational speaking, he's a great speaker and um, was glad that he participated in the, uh, in the graduation ceremony to our alternative ed and community uh, um, youth that graduated. So I do want to thank our chief and, and uh, just commend him on the great job. Thank you. Sandra. Uh, yes, attended the uh, area agency on aging. They continue to work for looking at ways to enhance and expand the ability to provide uh, nutritional programs throughout the county. Uh, attended the meeting that dealt with the uh, Sentinel State Prison, asked the warden to consider whether or not the community crews are still available or if they will be available. 
uh, they will be looking at that. We'll go dark until September. So maybe in September we'll have information and we'll talk with the city manager to see if that is still something we want to consider, the community crews. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. The only item I'll uh, report on, it's kind of a preview of coming attractions this Friday. I'll be in um, Sacramento attending the League of California Cities um, Public Safety Policy Committee meeting where we will be having a discussion, I'm sure, um, about the pending legislation. Mr. Duran, will you be in Sacramento as well or no? No, I will not be able to make it. Uh, okay. Family commitment. All right. Very good. If there is nothing else for the good of the order, then we will stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.